Hello and welcome to the Y2PV podcast, where I, Soraz, and one other guest discuss anything and everything surrounding Y2PV. This is episode seven, featuring McMangos. When you start to talk about Y2PV and its history, it's impossible to not mention McMangos' name. He's been making YTPs since 2007 and was an integral part in broadening the reach of Y2P and Y2PV. In this episode, we talk about some of the fads he started, his retrospective on the community, and what his future plans might entail. I recommend you check him out on Twitter as at McMangos1 or on YouTube as just McMangos. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoy. So you've been in the community for a while. Well, while is an understatement. So <laughs> uh, what are what was your origins with Y2P and Y2P and V? How did you find out about it? How did you start getting into it? Um, so how I first discovered YouTube poop was actually through a Swedish gaming magazine. Um, they were doing some kind of article on like really horrible, shitty games. Um, and of course they brought up, you know, the CDI games like Zelda and Hotel Mario. Um, so what I did was I wanted to look up the cutscenes for these games. I got on YouTube, uh, looked through some of the cutscenes, and then the related videos, I see uh, a YouTube poop. So I just go, what is this? I just click on it and uh, yeah, that's how I got into it. I thought it was really funny and just, yeah, <laughs> my kind of humor, I guess. Mm-hmm. So. Um, back back when related videos were actually useful and not just recommended shit. Yeah, right. Like, it's so garbage right now. I can't discover any new content from, like, people I don't already follow. But back yeah. then, it was just, like, you could find anything in the related videos. And that's, you know, I just kept exploring those videos. And, you know, it's it's the kind of stuff that I found funny at the time. So, yeah. Yeah. It was really easy to, like, kind of go into a rabbit hole of just clicking on different videos and watching them especially with video responses and stuff oh yeah for sure like i i really don't like how they removed those because like those were such an integral part of the ytp community at the time because like that's how you did collabs and that's how you did ytp tennis like you just have responses back and forth uh mm-hmm. but then they just like removed all that kind of sucks yeah yeah it really sucks i pretty much everybody i i, I don't even know like People's, people say that the community stuff wasn't used very much, but I don't know. I feel like everybody used it to some extent, except for, like, I don't know, maybe maybe not in the grand scheme of things. I don't know. But I mean, this was before social media, like, really took off. So yeah. back then, really, that was the only way to, like, share your YouTube poops and stuff. I mean, aside from, like, YouTube, I guess. But, uh, yeah, a yeah. lot of stuff happened <laughs> directly on YouTube. Yeah. I remember like back when uh, like with the old channel layout with like backgrounds and stuff, I used to uh, I used to go on like Let's Players uh, YouTube channels like Chugger Conroy and stuff. And like the channel comments there was basically like its own little message board, except everybody except everybody had like a two minute cool down on their messages. But it was pretty cool, honestly, like just to have like a little message board there. Yeah, I remember when they had like. I think they were called like bulletins or something like you could yeah. post little like status updates one thing i used to do because like when i was a kid i was really looking at ways to like monetize my youtube channel or whatever so i did this stupid shit where i like made a fiverr account and i was like i will give you a shout out on youtube for five dollars <laughs> <laughs> i actually made like a hundred bucks off of that Holy and i was like shit. i was like 13 <laughs> at the time so that was big money for me yeah that is big money it was, it was and, sick. And I love people that. say that YouTube poop don't pay the bills. <laughs> I mean, back then it was like absolutely unimaginable to like monetize YouTube poops, but like these days you have people making money off a of Patreon and like they're even verified on YouTube when all they do is YouTube poop. It's insane. Yeah, like you used to have to in order to get like the stuff on top of your channel for like the links that you could click, you had to be partnered through a network and everything and mm. all that. And I remember did Motendu get partnered? Was he like one of the first ones? I, I know Jab got partnered oh, yeah. pretty early. Um, yeah, but... I think Mountain Dew was probably one of the first um, yeah. to get like an official big partner thing like that. Uh, which is very cool because like, you know, he does some really high quality stuff. So like if anyone deserves it, it's totally him. Yeah. Yeah. So what a like looking back 
uh, with what you started? Are you like ashamed of the videos that you made way, way back? Or Absolutely. Do you... Yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have privated most of my really old videos um, for a wide variety of reasons. Like some of them were just like, okay, most of them were just really awful. Some of them had some kind of messed up jokes in them. Some of them were like using very like risky copyright material like you know mm. cartoon network kind of shit so i didn't want to get suspended again um so i made most of those private and deleted some as well i think but yeah. i kept like i kept my first youtube poop up because like that's I, I can't remove that it's it's my first yeah. thing i ever did i just have to keep that up even though it's really was that bad. was that in windows movie maker oh yeah for sure i i didn't yeah. know how to use anything else <laughs> Yeah, that was, well, that was back, I, I, I kind of feel bad for uh, younger kids because with Windows 7 Movie Maker, that was ass. Oh, like, yeah, Windows that 7 was Movie so Maker fucking awful. So bad. Jesus, I think you could, like, still install the old Movie Maker, though, on Windows 7, yeah. don't you? Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. Because, um, like, God, fuck that. That was not made for you to poop at all. I, I, think, I think some people on youtube actually made it like a challenge to themselves to use that to make youtube poop that was oh they did not end up well i <laughs> i don't remember those videos but i remember them being really really awful yeah they're just like like not having a timeline like i don't know what what were they thinking i don't know what were they thinking i don't know dude what were they thinking <laughs> yeah i don't know but uh being being in the community for so long you you've seen all the different shifts and all that like uh what are your feelings towards old school ytpmvs compared to like the modern day ytpmvs trend like old school being where it's like original music and they made it they pitched samples to make original music uh like do you miss that kind of stuff do you wish that would make a resurgence i i do kind of wish i do prefer those kind of ytpmvs i know that there's a couple of people who make those old style kind of white PMVs and I mean those get a lot of traction. I think that those kind of white PMVs are much more uh, like it's easier for the public to like consume them. They have a much broader audience because people can look at those videos and like understand that okay it's like you took some samples and you made a remix out of it. Cool. But if you show that same person a modern pitch shifting white PMV with like anime samples or whatever, they're not gonna understand what the fuck's going on. They're <laughs> they're just gonna like not get it. Yeah, yeah, and they're they're kind of like like what I've learned is most people are just like what what's the point or they don't really see the humor in it either. Mm. Um, so yeah, I I definitely do agree with the like the broader. The broader appeal to original music and it's just more impressive honestly yeah i like, mean to in, in to my not opinion, use a daw or any of that yeah and just to yeah yeah for sure i think um it would be nice if we had some kind of distinction between this new style ytpmv and the old school i mean i guess like new school old school is like one way you can categorize it but i think it would be better if we had like separate names because they're like two completely separate concepts to me and they appeal to like two kind of different demographics so i think it would be good to have some kind of separation there i don't know yeah i agree and honestly just kind of scrapping the whole you ytp and ytpmv names all together <laughs> yeah cuz like ytpmv because... is so it's so loosely related to youtube poop in general like old school ytpmvs i mean i can get those cuz like that's there's a lot of sentence mixing there, so it's basically like a YTP with a backing track. But modern day YTPMVs, they don't have much of an association with YouTube poop at all, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Certain certain like creators definitely do, but I I guess I guess in like a broader sense, yeah, it doesn't really have much to do with YTP. And it's really interesting because uh, you would think you would think being able to go from like one to the other would be pretty easy, but like. YTPMV is like super like YTP is niche, but this is like super duper niche. Like yeah, it's a niche within a niche. So. Yeah, yeah. That's why that's why it's crazy. Anytime I think about it, it's just like, damn, how how the fuck do did I get into this? Let alone so many other people. 
Yeah, I mean, this this is still, like, a relatively small subculture, but, like, it's it's getting attention on, like, other platforms. I mean, we're seeing a lot of YTPMV-style editing on, like, you know, when people make, you know, dank memes, as they call them, or whatever. Um, there's a lot of, like, YTPMV influence, and, like, you know, those people seem to get those videos. People seem to like them. So it's, like, I guess it's evolving. Yeah. Do you see that one of, like, the baby with Thunderstruck or whatever? And, uh... Is that the one that's, like, really off-pitch? Yeah, it's... A, it's yeah, for the most part. It's, like, it's, seen, it's, yeah, like, most of those videos that I see are just, like, really off-pitch or, like, very, very <laughs> primitive. And it's, like, people still are, like, holy shit, this slaps. Let's retweet it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's 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 pretty weird. I mm. I kind of, like, anytime I see a shitty YTPMV, but they don't know it's a YTPMV get popular, I'm just like, ah. Uh. Mm, I feel that. <laughs> I, wish, I feel that. Yeah. But, I don't know. What do you think it'll take for uh, YTPMV to get to, like, the mainstream? Do you think it'll just take a bit more time? Or do you think it'll be, like, I don't know, making making maybe, like, 30-second ones of just, like, using popular memes or songs or whatever? I mean, I think with time, it will just get more popular. Because, like, I, it's that's just how it works with, like, humor on the internet in general. Like, I think people just get more and more used to things that are well weird or like not normal so like more and more uh, obscure kinds of humor and video editing on, on the internet can like flourish as a result of that so i think you know we we already have ytpmvs that have like millions of views on like instagram and shit so like i think with more time people are just going to get more used to those kind of videos and you know it's, I think the future is looking bright in that regard. I don't think this style of editing is ever going to, like, go out of fashion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and speaking of, like, other platforms, uh, so back when SoundCloud was a thing, you mm -hmm. had you had a presence on SoundCloud. I, I had a bit of a presence, yeah. <laughs> do you think, do you think uh, like, SoundCloud itself ran its course, or do you, do you kind of miss it? I think it's just like people moved on to other platforms because like I don't, stuff like siva gunder stuff like to me that's basically soundcloud and that's thriving right now so like that's one thing um and a, a lot of other soundcloud people they just moved on to like twitter or tumblr or other places i i haven't really used soundcloud as a platform actively for a while now so i can't really say what it looks like on there but from what i know most people just moved on hmm yeah, I I think like some of the jokes were definitely getting stale and like you you're just limited with your creativity being audio only as well. Yeah, that's true. Like especially for YTPMV, like visuals are like it's it's a big part of it, especially with like modern YTPMVs. Um so I guess YTPMV esque content doesn't really fly that well on SoundCloud. It's better suited for like mashups and like short audio jokes or whatever you want to call it yeah yeah um what i'm i was with my i was with like a couple friends at magfest and uh one of them one of them was like they're taking like some big siva gunner picture or whatever mm. and uh my my friend nick is uh, was karino kosaka on soundcloud and uh i don't know if you knew them or anything but uh anyway like we were like gonna go take this picture he's like i don't blow out here i was like are you kidding me like siva gutter literally like birthed from soundcloud so if anything you deserve to be here more than like some of these other people i feel <laughs> yeah i mean it's like the kind of stuff that they do that's definitely like soundcloud-esque humor so like yeah i i have seen some like very early examples of like what siva gunner does on soundcloud like way before the channel even existed so like mm -hmm. it's it's definitely that kind of content yeah i think i found out about siva gunner through soundcloud when uh all of a sudden there's just like a bunch of like bait and switch shit mm. and like mashups uh, like uh sound font replacements or whatever i just started seeing a bunch of that and then i saw the channel i was like oh okay funny and mm. now it's fucking been here for so long. I'm I'm surprised it's gone on for so long, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised. Like, I go to the channel and it's like, last video was uploaded like three hours ago. I How do they yeah. just keep going? I mean, I know it's a lot of people, but still, goddamn, that's a lot of effort. Yeah, 
yeah it's it, it's really interesting to see it because like i definitely wouldn't have expected for there to be a like concentrated effort like that uh like ytp related or like ytp adjacent is what i like to say mm. um like like having like such a concentrated effort is just i don't know i felt i feel like that would have been thought unfath- unfathomable like back in like 2013 or something yeah i mean it is i mean there have been like little like video collectives i guess you would call them for like a while you know people just making like shared channels and just uploading whatever but siva gunner has like a theme and like an idea behind it and people like organize so i think it's unique in that regard but the concept of just making shit uh, as a community or a collective that's that's been around for a while speaking of that i kind of miss the like shared channels like that shit that shit was always great i yeah, feel like are there like, any there some... are there any around like that are still active or mm, the cool videos maybe but they only they only upload like once a year or something mm, yeah it but, is it is a cool concept like i i appreciate like little niche things like that mm-hmm. yeah so going back to sound clown uh what was your reaction with uh Denacious t blowing up like it did and <laughs> even getting played on like bbc radio like uh, were you was... were you pretty surprised by that I, I was i was very surprised by that i mean i thought that like i didn't think the sound clown itself was very funny at the time i thought it was like pretty mediocre but i guess people really <laughs> thought it was kind of funny and then the attention it got was like i don't i don't even know how i discovered it was played on bbc i think someone just messaged me randomly and was like hey they played your stuff on bbc and then i just <laughs> hastily like looked up the recording for it um i i have no idea how i got it i saw i managed to get a replay of the show um so i just recorded that for like just having it around because like that's that's cool i even got like yeah. a little profile on bbc's like website <laughs> so if you search like artists on bbc and you search for mcmangos i'm just right there for Holy some shit it's just tenacious t that's my only song <laughs> the only song the only thing God, i've ever made <laughs> yeah well i mean like that that track alone i i fuck up trying to say tenacious d sometimes i'll still say tenacious <laughs> t just because of that track oh, and damn. like uh i don't know i feel like that track like there's like a few tracks that i feel like have had like a big influence on people uh through soundcloud and everything mm. and that's that's definitely one of them and then um additionally like um uh, with dead mouse playing funny moles oh yeah that uh, was at, uh, at festival that's that's fucking crazy that was were you crazy were you upset by like people giving dead mouse credit like saying that he made it oh he's so funny or whatever like dude i wasn't upset i was fucking fuming like i was <laughs> i was genuinely like mad about it i was like so mad to the point where like because people were like re-uploading it on soundcloud and being like hey dead mouse funny moles remix i would like literally go on those tracks and like dmca claimed them i would take them down because <laughs> i was so fucking mad that people were just like miscrediting this even though it's just like such a short and basic joke like those seem to be like my most popular jokes like the stuff i just spend like five minutes on and then it yeah. seems it seems like it feels like such a dick move to just get upset about something like a joke that's like so insignificant like i didn't put a lot of effort into it but like to me it's like the principle that matters like people should be credited for what they make what they make regardless of like how simple it is oh yeah i definitely agree yeah it's kind of funny how like the the shit that you put like the least amount of time and not very much effort into and it's pretty simple is usually what either a gets popular or b gets copy striked and yeah. your channel gets fucked <laughs> it's really weird it works like that i mean i know what it's like to get copy copy striked or whatever because like oof, i've been suspended from youtube like i i've seriously lost count of how many times i've been suspended from youtube Holy shit i used to know how many times it was but i i just forgot it somewhere along the way i think it's like three or four and i've gone unsuspended each time that's crazy like the last time it took a lot of effort because like google they're constantly like changing how you can like 
appeal, uh, you know, copyright claims and stuff. So like the last time I literally had to like to get a hold of someone at Google to like get this shit fixed because like none of the automated options like worked for me. So I had to like mail constantly for like months until I finally reached a person and they were like, oh, well, this thing's wrong. Your channel's back. I'm just like, all right. Oh, you know, it took a couple Sweet. of months, but <laughs> all right, cool. At that point, like I, I looked at my view graphs like over the entire period that I've been on YouTube. Um, every time I get suspended and come back, like my daily view count just like goes down by a whole lot. So like I, I barely get any daily views anymore. I used to get like so many daily views just because my old shit was like still popular, still being recommended to people. But I think mm. being suspended so many times must have like fucked with my account or something because like, oof, I don't know. Yeah, that that really sucks. I I definitely notice with like uh, other creators and other YTP viewers like if they have a large amount of subscribers that uh, especially if the if like a bulk of their subscribers came from like 2012 or whatever like they just don't give views anymore and it really sucks but you know that's just the way it is yeah it's just the algorithm I mean I remember when yeah. I was subscribed to people and I would like actually see their new uploads first thing because you know that's YouTube would put them right in your face. But these days, if I upload something on YouTube, I don't reach many of my subscribers at all. Whereas if I put something on Twitter, you know, a lot of people have the potential of seeing it. So that's why I generally go for those platforms instead these days, unless it's like a big, serious project, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I like to, uh, yeah, basically the way that I see YouTube nowadays is just more of like an archival uh, tool because like they, uh, the, it just, I guess, I guess for me, like my channels, my channel grew in recent years, so I'm still getting views, but I'm sure at some point they'll definitely drop off, but it's just, yeah, it's, it's really annoying. I wish like literally we've been complaining about this since 2000, <laughs> 2010, 2009. I don't even know. Ever it's since been I've so been long. on YouTube, I've yeah. been complaining about it. Yeah, I I mean, I don't think anything's going to change. If anything is going to get worse, like YouTube has no incentive to like promote content from, you know, unpartnered small content creators. They want to push their partners contents cuz like those yeah. they got ads on there, YouTube will make money from it. So, I mean, that's that's the kind of content they're going to favor. It's yeah. which just sucks. I mean, people have been talking about like getting a YouTube al alternative, but like I, c I could see that working for like specific types of content, but like a YouTube replacement, I don't think that's going to happen for like a long time. I think the only the only thing that could be like poised to do that is if Nico Nico were to have like an English English website and they just like launch it and everything. I'm sure a lot of people would flock to there. But don't, don't they have an English website now? Or at least like I, English they, language they options? They used to. They used to, but then they got rid of it. But I'm what? saying like uh, like a totally separate like English, like like they're using their infrastructure to make like a totally separate like English Oh yeah, uh, like a separate, whole website. separate platform. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I get that. That could work. Because like, I don't know. I don't know what else could, like Twitter definitely might be able to but honestly i don't trust twitter either twitter <laughs> twitter is just a shit and i mean like in, the video the video quality on twitter is just oh, the fucking worst God. like that's one reason yeah. why like uploading stuff to youtube as well is good because like then you get it in a quality as like near the original quality at least on twitter it's just a coin toss whether your video ends up looking like fucking oatmeal i don't know yeah yeah like uh that's the that's one of the one of the main reasons I stick with TweetDeck now is because every time that you watch a video, it's always in the highest quality. Mm. Whereas on web Twitter and and even like uh, mobile Twitter, it just look like with the apps, it just it never is like the highest quality. It's just like yeah. I feel like everybody has good enough internet nowadays to be able to, to watch a fucking seven twenty p thirty fps video from Twitter. But I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't get why it's so shit. I don't know. And I mean, I've seen people on Twitter's like, I've, I've even like looked into this, like I've tried to research how do I upload something on Twitter without it looking like absolute fucking garbage. And like, I've, I've looked at the Twitter developer forum and like people are complaining 
hey, when I upload a video, it looks like shit. And the developers are just like, hey, tough luck. Try making a better <laughs> video, idiot. Stupid. They <laughs> offer, like, no helpful advice. They just, like, roll with it. I don't understand. Yeah. And then they try to, like, put in new features or whatever. And usually oh. they just always fail. Oh, yeah. They're, like, so. adding... They're, like, trialing stories now, I've heard. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's They're making one of those things. That's, that's yeah. just... Ooh. I hate that. It's like it's like when uh, Instagram tried to copy Snapchat and just kind of failed. Like you're not you're not gonna beat Snapchat at at its own game. Like that's that's gonna that's here to stay. I feel. Yeah. I don't just, know. Yeah, Snapchat's just kind of the king of that kind of communication. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I know there's two fads that I could think of off the top of my head or two things that you started like the skrillex kill everybody fad and then the mm meme uh <laughs> video uh what other fads have you started can you even do you even remember <sighs> fuck like it's it's hard to remember because like some stuff i just like make with absolutely no intention of it becoming a fad and then it becomes a fad and i'm just like mm -hmm. all right the skrillex uh thing was actually one of those kind of things i did not make that with the intention of making it into a fad but then someone just made a response and i guess others just saw that response and they were like okay so this is a fad now um but yeah aside from those i've also done the uh this video contains thing like that fad. oh that you started that i didn't know that i i started that yeah this was way back in like 2008 like there's there's so much stories surrounding that fad actually i could talk <laughs> for like hours um, but I can keep it short. Uh, so it started when I heard this YTPMV by someone, uh, Iguila Mom, like Mama Luigi backwards, the person who did like the Tomorrow Isle video and stuff like that. Uh, so he had made a YTPMV called The Bagel Song, which was just Luigi saying bagel with MIDI replaced over like Yakety Sax, Sax or something, you know, the Benny Hill theme song yeah um and like to my ears it sounded really automated so i was like you know midi replacement wasn't like a big thing back then so like people didn't understand this technique so but it sounded really like automated to me so i was like hmm, i wonder how he made this so i messaged him on youtube back when they had a messaging system oh yeah um, and i was like hey how did you make this and he was like i just got a midi i put it into fl studio and then i just slapped the sample on there you know bada bing bada boom done so I was like, hey, I could do that. So <clears throat> I got the Pingus sample and then I got Gourmet Race. I, th I think the reason I picked that song is because I heard it in like, you know, the Snoop Dogg mashup. Oh, with, yeah. With Gourmet Race. That, that shit is really, really old um, by now. <laughs> but yeah, that's where I got the inspiration to use that song because like I had that in my head. Um, so I just slapped that shit together for like... I don't know two three minutes and i just rendered it and like threw it on youtube and like i had i this one i really intended to be a fad like i tried really hard to like force it into being a fad um so i made like a bunch of my own fad responses i think i made like three in a single day or some shit holy um, shit because <laughs> like i was really trying to push i was i was like 12 or 13 at the time so like yeah i just i just wanted my shit out here and like people you know, they, they seem to accept the fad. They think they seem to like understand it. They seem to like it. And within a month I had like a hundred or 200 or something video responses. I was like, cool. That's um, fucking crazy. Huh? It's fucking insane. like to me as a 13 year old at the time, I was like, holy shit, my content's getting attention on the internet. This owns. Um, but then after a while, I kind of grew tired of all the attention it was getting. So what I did was I audio swapped the video <laughs> and I just renamed the video to from this video contains win to this video contains audio swapping. And what I did then was make it so that everyone could add annotations to the video, you know, back when you could do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so like when you would load up that video, it would just be fucking chaos of people like spamming slurs and annotations and just like a million of those jumping at you at the same time. Well, some <laughs> I think it was that um, fuck. What was the song that I audio swapped it with? 
Um, okay, actually, the story gets more interesting from this point, so just <clears throat> hold on to your hat here. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so initially, I replaced it with some random song. I think it was called like Queen Bee or something. It was just some kind of folk song kind of thing, really unfitting. Um, but then a few weeks after that whole audio swapping thing, I get a message on YouTube and it's from Track One Recordings, uh, which is the record label behind uh, 009 Sound System, you know, the Dreamscape video, the YouTube anthem or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. And what was in there was like, hey, we've seen your video. Um, if we pay you money, will you audio swap it to this other song? They, they were shit. offering me money to like audio swap it to that um, YouTube anthem song. They were offering me like $150 to do this. That's fucking crazy. So they, I was just like, I mean, of course I would accept that. Cause like that's, that's <laughs> big money to me at the time. So I just replaced it with like that uh, typical 009 sound system song, you know, the dreamscape thing. Mm -hmm. And I got paid for it and it was insane. Um, I think if I like go way back in my PayPal transaction records, I could like dig up that transaction if they still keep records that old. This was like 2008, so like way back. But that was still one of the most <laughs> insane sponsorship kind of things that I've ever experienced. It's like it's it's weird. I don't know if they did that with like any other videos. Maybe that's how it got like really a lot of spread on YouTube. I don't know. That that is fucking crazy. I I'd, I'd never do that. I've I've uh, never I've never like told this story publicly. I've been meaning to like tweet about it cuz like it's it's so long ago that I don't <laughs> think they really care. But yeah. It's just it's a crazy crazy story. Was that before that song was popular? Yeah, it was way before. So like I think they were like going to a lot of like popular videos on YouTube and me like, "Hey, audio swap this and we'll send you some money." I think that's how they like got the original spread. But like it's I'm sure huh. it's partially as well because like, you know, it's sorted alphabetically and like double nine sound system shows up at the very top. So I think that played some part in it, sure. But I, if they sponsored me to do this, I'm sure they sponsored others as well. Yeah, yeah. God, that's I, that's like simultaneously like crazy and like smart as fuck <laughs> like to get that to get your song out there because i'm sure like all those kids were like oh okay cool yeah, funny I mean, <laughs> yeah it's it's a really unique way to promote something i mean especially at the time yeah. so like yeah that was that was cool i actually audio swapped some of my other videos like after the transaction was done with i was like hey i have these other popular videos like these really shitty videos that I don't care about, but they have a lot of views. Can I audio swap them as well? And they were like, sure. I think I got like 50 bucks for like two other videos. <laughs> they were like really awful Sparta remixes or some shit. So like, I don't care about those videos at all. They're, they're all honestly, gone now. Honestly, that makes it even funnier. Like Sparta remix visuals <laughs> with the <laughs> fucking dreamscape playing in the back. It, was, it was a fucking mess. I have no idea how I got paid for it. But the weirdest part is that all of these videos got removed from YouTube for like, I think it was like community guidelines reasons. They never like gave me like a solid reason why they were removed. I don't know if they like uh, somewhat tracked down the sponsorship thing and like just removed all the videos that were like linked to it, but they just all kind of disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Damn, that sucks. Because I, I was going to ask if they're still up or not. Uh, I mm, I don't think they're still up. Maybe one is still up, but like private or something. I can check on that later, mm. but I don't think any of them are still around. That's fuck. I've I've like I I don't think I've heard of like anybody just making money f from uh like well even back then making money from YouTube period was like impossible. Let alone just like that shit. That's crazy. Yeah, like back then uh, it was absolutely unheard of. Like you would have to see, seek seek like revenue other than YouTube because like YouTube themselves they were not gonna pay you for that kind of content. Never. Yeah, yeah. Did uh did you ever like audio swap anything on SoundCloud or anything else just for a joke? Um, I I was actually considering doing that with Funimals for a while. I was thinking about just like replacing that as like an 
April Fool's joke and then just swipping, swatching it back. Uh, but I never ended up doing that because, I don't know, I think that that specific joke has like run its course. So like if I replaced it, nobody would really notice. But then again, I yeah. do get people like messaging me every now and then and being like, Hey bro, the uh, Funimal's link is down. Please re-upload. And I'm just like, who are you going to play this for? <laughs> who, who has not heard this by now? Who is going to think this is funny? It's not relevant. <laughs> and like... Even if you just look up, I'm pretty sure if you just look up McBagos, there's just a fuck ton of re-uploads of it. There's so many re-uploads. They're like all over YouTube. I think most of them are like credited to me by now, because like I, as I said, I like DMCA'd everything that had Deadmau5's name on it. So I think, yeah, there's a lot of re-uploads. God, I I can't even imagine what if I dumb SoundCloud jokes. At least at least it like was sounded clean, you know, and it was like correct. Mm. Uh, and it wasn't just like you know, sure it's a simple joke, but at least it wasn't like bad per se, you know. Yeah. Like yeah. you, it wasn't like off pitch or anything. That's like my worst nightmare to make like something, something that like has an off pitch somewhere or whatever, and it just gets overly popular. Like that's that's like my worst nightmare. Mm. Yeah, that's. Oof, I don't want to think about that. Like <laughs> I, a lot of my popular stuff, I feel is just like. It's it's not very good, I feel. Like it's not very well made. Like most of my old stuff, like anything pre twenty like eleven, twenty twelve is just it's it's kinda shit. So I don't really try to advertise that content, but like some of it is still kinda popular, so I kinda have to live with that. But mm -hmm. that's just that's just life. So uh looking at twenty twenty, what kind of content do you wanna make or do you even care really to make any content? I mean, I've since I do have a full-time job these days, I don't have as much free time as I used to to like make stuff. Um, yeah. I have some like ideas for bigger YTPMVs in my mind, but I actually need to like put a lot of effort into making those happen if I do want to make those happen, which I really want to do at some point, but it's really hard to like get a proper big project going um, with the way my life is right now so usually what I do is I just think of some kind of joke and like just throw it together real quick in Vegas like no real visuals or anything just like demonstrating hey this is the joke laugh now it's funny <laughs> um, and then I just toss that online and some some stuff you know some stuff gets popular and that's that's pretty cool so yeah and I'm pretty happy with like just uploading a little smaller things every now and then but it would be nice to make a big proper project at some point as well mm -hmm. yeah that's kind of how i feel as well like it's it, it it's not even in terms of like uh like i guess i could really put in time if i just put in like you know an hour here or there or whatever over the course of like a month and have something worthwhile but it's just like sticking with something you know mm. and working on it for a while yeah, that's, that's really like, difficult. That's like a big issue, yeah. I mean, especially, especially when you're making content for like such a niche audience. Like if I could make something that would, you know, have some kind of big mainstream appeal, then, you know, I can see myself putting some time into that. But if it's something that's only going to appeal to like a couple of hundred people, then it's it's really hard to like get into the mindset that you want to like make this happen. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, at least. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, through YTP or YTPMV, has, like, uh, video editing or, like, interacting with other English speakers, has that, like, helped your career at all? Um, that's hard to say. I mean, I, I mean, YTP and YTPMV helped me get into music and, like, you know, creating my own <clears throat> music and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um... But I guess that's more like personal sense of fulfillment than like, you know, something that you have used for in your career. But it did get me, I mean, I've always been like interested in computers and like software and things like that. So, you know, YTPMV kind of inspired me to explore how, how people make those kind of video effects or how they get the audio to sound like that. So it, mm. it helped me like think about video and audio a bit more creatively, I guess. And that's... That's something that's good to have, I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. 
Have you have you pretty much only used Vegas through the years? Have you tried to use any other programs? I mean, Ooh. for what's well, um, previous. <laughs> okay, so I started with Windows Move Maker, as I said earlier, and from there I moved on to Adobe Premiere Elements. Which okay. is, is, oh God, I don't know if they even make that anymore, but it was basically like a scaled down version of Premiere Pro. And my little 13 year old brain was like this, I'm sure this is great software to make YTP and YTP and Vs in. It, it really was not at all. I, I think I stuck with that for like two years or something before I tried Vegas. And the thing with Vegas is that like, I stuck with Vegas 5 for like a really, really long time. Vegas 5? Vegas 5, baby. This was like 2010 or something, and I was just sitting there with like Vegas 5, just thinking, this this shit slaps, this is the best program. <laughs> I don't even think you could render like HD video in it. It was so fucking old and outdated, but I just, I just, <laughs> I don't know. I had a hard time installing Vegas because I was stupid. Um, so I just kind of stuck with Vegas 5 because, I mean, it worked. Yeah, but these days I use Vegas 14, so, you know, I'm yeah. up to date. Yeah. I know a lot of people started on, like, oh, Vegas 7? I know, like, I started on 9, um, but I know a lot of other people started on 7. But I've never heard of anybody, stay, like, going with 5. <laughs> that was actually, like, a pretty common thing on YouTube at the time. I mean, I was very active in the YouTube community at the time. And yeah. I think they had like some kind of guide for like how to get Sony Vegas. And for whatever reason, that guide only linked to Vegas 5.0. So that was like what people would download. And I mean, it, it works. Like it doesn't have stuff like, I mean, it's it's missing a couple of features, but like the basic timeline editing and stuff like that, it's exactly the same as it is in like modern Vegas. So like the actual editing part is, you know, it just, it felt, it felt right. Yeah, yeah. Which even whenever we complain about like instability of Vegas, it, it just goes to show they've literally just like added shit on top of like the original Vegas and yeah, just like... went one boom, 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 boom. And then it's like, well, why is it so unstable? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, don't, I barely even want to think about it. Like, <laughs> it must be a fucking mess. Yeah, I, I like I wish way, way back I would have just got one of those like counter things where uh where like you know you just press it once and then the the counter goes up mm. i wish i had one of those and i would have clicked it every time that vegas crashed on me because <laughs> oh. there for a while it didn't crash very much but like in the past year or two like so, some vegs just are fucked and they just yeah. like refuse to work like i don't know what it is that makes it so unstable because like some days it will work other days it will just not work with the, like the same videos and the same project files and everything it's just fucking weird mm -hmm. yeah and like uh i know a lot of people some some people have started to say like oh why aren't you using gpu rendering or whatever it's or gpu for the playback i was like I, do you realize how many errors that produces <laughs> like i don't i don't want it to be any more in like unstable than it already is no, like I've I've barely ever gotten the GPU rendering thing to work. I think it just causes more crashes for me, so I just like switched it off. So I I yeah. know what position you're in there. Yeah. I don't. How do how how does that not work? I feel like every other video editing tool, or at least of like Vegas's caliber, has gotten GPU like utilization to work just fine. But Vegas, you try like once or twice, it just crashes immediately yeah i don't know i think i think vegas in general just needs to like be rebuilt from the bottom up bottom up like i would pay good money for sony vegas that actually works mm -hmm. it's not even I called agree. sony vegas anymore like it's just vegas or magics or vegas or whatever magics, the fuck. yeah Oof. and i don't i don't think that magics is very like i thought maybe they'd be a bit more competent but i don't think they're like much more competent because like even magics is like uh past video editing programs I haven't been like amazing they've been like uh they've been like one uh, like a half step above windows movie maker i mm -hmm. would say <laughs> and that and like they i don't know maybe maybe i'm wrong and i don't really know anything but i don't know i don't think i don't think magics is gonna 
build it up anytime soon. I think they're just going to keep shipping it out and selling it as a new version. Yeah, probably. I mean, I I did used to like use some of their like music software because uh, mm. back in the day there was this fad. I don't know if you know about it. It's uh, the one like um, source with electronic sounds. Or oh yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> okay, so, I love like, that fad. That whole fad was based on a preset in a Magic's audio thing. I think it was like some kind of vocoder preset that you just like slapped on any audio and it made it sound like that. So that was what the entire fad was. Just like import some audio, throw the preset on it, and there you go. That's the fad entry. God, I, I always wondered how people did that. Because some of that some of that shit sounds so funny. Yeah, well that's that's how it's because done. it's like it's like all the same chord progression. I think my favorite one is the uh Ganon one where uh he's he does like the lightning and the lightning oh. perfectly goes in like a chord progression yeah that shit fucking, kills me that, every that single shit time slaps, dude. <laughs> so uh looking back did you ever expect to be in y2p or y2p and v for more than a decade or have you just kind of have you just kind of ridden the wave and went along with it I mean, I don't know if you could still say that, like, I'm still part of it. Because, like, I, I still make content every now and then, sure. But it's, like, the community is so different now than what it used to be. Like, it used to be concentrated uh, on YouTube and, you know, YouTube as well. And then you would have, like, a couple of Skype groups and shit. And, like, that was it. That was the community. But now it's, like, fragmented across mm. so many platforms. So it's, like... I, I don't know what I would call, like, the community. Like, what, what part of this is the community? Is it just, like, making the videos, like, regardless of which, which platform you're on? Or is it, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's, uh, I don't know how to how to describe it. It's It's kind of, like, 2014, I guess, like, around there when... Uh, a lot of people were just sticking to like Skype chats and Skype chats only and mm. sometimes randomly uploading something. I would say that's kind of where it's at right now. But I would say it's also a lot more open than in past though. Like people people are a lot more willing, especially now that we're not we're not all edgy teenagers, but mm. like people are like a lot more willing to be nice and help and you know, not not be an asshole and just comment rude things on every single video <laughs> yeah, i mean the community did seem to have like kind of a rough spot you know back in like 2014 2015 like that kind of era i don't know i wasn't very active in the community at the time but i just like saw a lot of toxicity coming from a lot of people for like no good reason really yeah yeah i i will say like i think if mlp didn't happen i think y2pmv definitely would have but like not have taken off quite as much mm -hmm. and secondly especially if undertale didn't come out i think that would have really been like the final nail in the coffin <laughs> for ytp and v yeah i mean it's it's insane how like ytp and v can like exist within these like specific fandoms like you can have undertale ytp and v's and like all that shit like it can just exist as a subculture within a subculture so it's like very very niche content it's amazing how that kind of stuff can like thrive how to make John Tron sing. <laughs> God, I can't that believe that shit. John Tron YTPMEs was like a whole category of videos. Like that was a whole community. That's yeah. over just one source. That's just insane. Yeah, yeah, it is crazy. Well, it's it's kind of like it's almost like the infatuation with Octagon, right? Like mm -hmm. it's 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 similar to that, except like Octagon is rooted in YTPMV, whereas John Tron is rooted with with john tron's fans and then maybe through that they find y2pmv yeah exactly but yeah it's i don't know there are some really bad john tron ones like that like i i swear every single can can y2pmv is awful i've never <laughs> i've never seen a good one like I, the like i remember i remember the mlg uh can can one was like you know back when uh montage parodies were a thing oh, oh no that <laughs> That was, like, the absolute worst video I think I've ever seen, and I can't believe it exists. That sounds fucking awful. 
sure. I, I think like when it comes to can can, I've seen like a couple of good uh, mad videos that use that uh, song, because like I I don't know. I mean Japanese people they're just like good at like creating content that's at least you know you can at least watch it. it doesn't have to be like spectacular. Of course they make a lot mm. of spectacular stuff as well, but it's like everything is gonna be at least watchable when you watch a mad video. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've never really gotten into Mads quite as much, but I think it's just like whichever one you're first introduced in and like what you first decide like, oh, I like this more or I like that more. It's just like down to personal preference, but I wish I got into Mads more. There's some there's some really cool like sources and stories and everything and yeah, yeah I, mean, I don't know. And I I think there's like a lot of overlap between like Mads and YTPMVs. But, like, what's most interesting to me is, like, how ahead of their time um, Mads were. Like, there's this one uh, with uh, the Angry German Kid set to, like, mm. some Final Fantasy VII music. That was made in, like, 2008. And that still holds up today, like, both audio and visual-wise to me. And that's just insane that people were making that kind of content before YTPMV was even really established as a genre. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's so crazy to go back and like watch old uh older watch PMVs that are just timeless, you know? And it's mm -hmm. like at the time, like it's almost like that we take it for granted, right? But like uh looking back, like like I definitely consider like spies like you to be one of them. Mm -hmm. And Tremolo Treble is definitely my favorite. I've said that a bunch of times. <laughs> but those those two I consider to be like the absolute like timeless classics, like of like pinnacle almost but i don't know i mean when i was prepping for this podcast i was like looking through a lot of my old likes and there's like so many old white dpmvs that i just completely forgotten about and then i just click on them and i just like hey i mean this stuff really influenced me back in the day and i thought that this was really good uh, most of them a lot of them don't really hold up very well but i mean there's still that sense of nostalgia so you just like kind of enjoy them anyway yeah yeah nostalgia definitely like it doesn't necessarily like cloud um cloud your judgment of videos but it definitely like helps give a sense and like a purpose i guess i don't know yeah that for makes sure sense. yeah that I, I think that makes sense yeah yeah but uh <laughs> here's that mlg k cam video so you could you could witness how awful it is <laughs> do you want me to watch this right now or are you gonna put me yeah, through this Go for oh it. Oh boy, all right. Let's see Let's see how long you can go through it. All right, I'm watching it. All right, there's the hit marks. There's the... God, none of this is on pitch. <laughs> Not... Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. They, they were pitch shifting the hit, hit markers, and I just, like, closed the video. I closed all of Chrome. Like, all my tabs are gone. I, I can't believe all, you would make me watch whole, this. A whole 10 seconds. Oh, that's a that's a new world record, ladies and gentlemen. Ten seconds. I I, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> okay, so to close it all out, uh, so just curious, like, what the Swedish YTPMV like scene kind of looks like. Like, uh, what all, what do you, what even all Swedish YTPMVers are there? I know. I oh you. You could probably count them on, like, Torges? one hand, to be honest. I, is Torges Swedish? Like, I thought it was from, like, the UK or something. Well, I know he lives in the UK now, but I know he... I, I think he speaks Swedish a lot. Hmm. So, I think he... I don't know. I wasn't aware of that. I know of me, I know of Goose, I know of Spiteful, and I guess oh, yeah, Torges Goose. as well, if he is Swedish. But, yeah, you can basically count the entire community on, like, one or two hands, because the community is basically non-existent. But... It's actually kind of interesting that it is non-existent because uh, Sweden actually has like a very active uh, or like a lot of history with like video editing and video remixes. Like a lot of people grew up watching like, you know, funny dubs and like things like that. So we definitely have a lot of video remix culture. Um, we just don't really call it YTP or YTPMV. We just call it like remix or parody. So there's a lot of videos that are kind of YTP or YTPMV-esque that are Swedish, but hmm. I wouldn't really say there's a Swedish YTP or YTPMV community at all. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely... I, I don't think any any culture can 
beat the Polish, <laughs> like uh, the the uh, Famiki crew. Like that that shit's insane. Yeah, that's uh, that's some good. That's some good shit. Oh yeah, I guess that, I guess that would be an example of a like a group channel that still goes on. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, I I, I guess I'm kind of surprised that there isn't more from Sweden. Oh maybe maybe he's from Norway. Maybe that that's where Torges is from. I don't fucking remember. I gotta <laughs> ask him. And who knows? But uh. I remember Goose telling me the story that I he like he like recognized you across the street oh, or something and he just right. like <laughs> um, I I can tell the story actually. Okay. So you know how we both play uh, Beatmania 2DX like the rhythm game. Yeah. Um, so there's this one arcade in Sweden that has a cabinet, and I I've, I've been tweeting uh, about like going there and you know posting my scores and stuff. Um, and one day when I was heading to the arcade, this little skinny Swedish white dude with two skateboards in his arms is just sitting outside the arcade. And he just like looks up at me and he's just like, are you McMangos? And I'm just like, yeah. And he's like, hey, I'm, I, I love your videos. I'm, I'm a fan. And he's like, cool. And I just kind of walk in and like, we play <laughs> games together for a while. And that's, that's that's just funny. how you met and now we're good friends so it was it it was good i i would be pretty taken aback by that at first too like i, I don't know how i'd react because like i don't know i mean being, it is kind being... of weird when you think about it but then again it's like it's just like very easy to like find someone if you both have the same niche interests like he knew that this was the only place where you could play uh beat mania in all of sweden basically so he just like Mm. figured yeah you know i'll just go there too he actually That's like cool. snuck in with me because like okay the place is like a bar and he was 18 at the time i don't think it was like allowed in or actually maybe it was 17 yeah i think it was 17 so it wasn't like allowed into the arcade because it was like 18 plus because they were serving alcohol and shit so when i just went in he kind of like snuck in with me like i kind of snuck him in to like play 2dx <laughs> that's funny <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was, it was good times. Fuck yeah. Like, uh, I think, yeah, Goose, Goose told me about that story one time and, uh, I was just like, I was just like, I don't even know how I'd react if somebody just asked, are you Sora? Like, I I don't know. I, I know I found out that, um, uh, there, there's like one other YTPM video that goes to the same university as me. And I've been, I've been meeting to like hang out with him. It's a lamp shopping. And I've been meaning to hang out with him, but like I, I don't know. It's just like weird. How do you bring that up? <laughs> yeah, I don't even know like where to oof. where to begin. I don't know. Like apparently, I mean, I've like I used to go to I used to like take a university course for like uh, game music, um, which I took for like one year, and there was actually a guy in my class of like five students who was following me on SoundCloud. So that's just Holy like shit. It's, it's it's such a small world, like sometimes yeah. it's just people just relate to your content somehow. It's insane. That is, that is fucking crazy. Did they did they know you from like your actual music or your SoundCloud shit? I mean, I never really talked to them. Like we were in like separate work groups. I just like saw mm. their SoundCloud and I saw that they were following me. So I was just like, that's weird. <laughs> but like the thing is i never really like bring up my internet stuff in real life so like not a lot of people in real life really know what i do on the internet and yeah i have a lot of different reasons for that um i mean a big one is that i don't really want to be treated differently because i have like some moderate internet fame um and like the other is that my content is just like so weird that like i would have to spend so much time just explaining why things are funny and then things just end up not being funny so it's, yeah it's those yeah. kind of things yeah i definitely i definitely can relate to that i just anytime anytime somebody asks like oh how like uh how did like you do video editing i'm like oh yeah i just make shit posts like that's all <laughs> i say and it's just end of conversation right there i don't say anything more I mean, the fact that you can say that these days and people understand it, like, that's that's a good thing. Because, like, if someone asked me back in 2009, like, hey, what what do you put on YouTube? What kind of videos do you make? I would not be able to answer that question in, like, any way that makes sense. But, like, if I could just 
say, hey, I make shit posts, you know, that makes that makes things way easier. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I kind of like like the the direction that memes have went into because, well, a it's been more, it's been getting more and more like Y2P every year. Honestly, mm -hmm. like it's kind of crazy how modern memes are just basically just white peas. Um, yeah. But uh, like like a lot of modern memes, honestly, are just white PMV visuals without what the white PMV pitching. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's I've noticed. basically what they are. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 kind of cool in that regard to be able to uh, be able to say, oh, I just make dumb shit posts instead of like you said, having to explain it or whatever. Oh, yeah, speaking but. of those, speaking of those, like, um, white DPMVs, like, that are just only visuals, um, there's this one, like, genre of white DPMV that Jan showed me, um, I think it's called, like, white DPMV con foto or something, it's like a Spanish thing or something, where it's literally just white DPMV visuals, like, there's no pitch shifting, it's just what? images flipping back and forth. What? That's crazy. Yeah, it's 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 some kind of thing. Like I don't remember the details surrounding it. Maybe it's just like some kind of end joke. But I just, it's I don't get it. I, I I've never heard of that. That's that's fucking hilarious. Honestly, it doesn't surprise me, uh, especially considering the fucking shirk scan community. If that shit yeah, exists, fuck. literally anything can exist. Yeah, like I I still don't understand like how that got started <laughs> and like how that got any momentum. It's <laughs> it's just don't so do bad. it. They they'll do like shirk scans of shirk scans to like the the one hundredth power. <laughs> like they just keep putting it through the same veg. I, mean, I don't. It's fucking crazy. Like, are these kids making it? Like, who who makes yeah. this? Yeah, I I'm pretty sure I you like I don't know. It could be some like fucking elaborate AI or something. But it gets views. Like, I I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, you, I, could, like, you some... could definitely like automate that whole process. You could just like make some kind of script that just loads sources into Vegas and just like generates those things. Yeah. Yeah. It, it could be just that honestly, but like, why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, uh, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't get that at all because like, I'm pretty sure it with like the autofill or whatever, whenever you type in white PMV, like white PMV shirk scan is like one of the first things that comes <laughs> up from that. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking funny. No. I'm actually, I'm curious. I'm going to look right now. White PMV. Scan. Yep, this Scan is the first one. right there. All right, good and shit. And then White PMV collab 2019. Undertale, Can Can, Robotnik, <laughs> Megalovania, Mario, TF2. TF2 is all the way at the bottom. Mm. There's actually this one uh, guy who makes pretty good Robotnik White PMV still. I I don't really know how to pronounce his name. It's like I, I Teach Vader or something. Oh, yeah, it's I Teach Vader, yep. Yeah, like those, that person does like old school Robotnik style YTPMVs and they're like really impressive. It's like exactly like the old ones used to be, but like even better. It's just, yeah. I, I love all of his videos so much. Mm hmm. Me too. It's, it, I think he's like one of the only ones, honestly. And yeah, probably. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I'm surprised that anybody's doing it at all. I mean, I thought that kind of stuff, like those kind of white DPMEs would have some kind of like white DPMV renaissance after like Big Beat Mario was made, because like that's the one big that everyone knows about, kind of. But mm. after Big Beat Mario, I kind of like never saw any videos in that style really for a very long yeah. time. I don't know what happened there. I thought that would inspire more similar videos, but I guess not. What was your initial reaction when Big Beat Mario came out? Damn, I I thought that was really like technically impressive. Like I get that it's not technically impressive by today's standards, but this was like what 20, 2010, 2009? Mm -hmm. Like how old is that? Yeah, 2010. Let's look. Yeah. No, it was like December 2009. Oh. All right. Well, so, that's basically yeah, pretty much. Anyway, I mean, it's it's just like a very good song in general, but it's also like very interesting technique to like like reuse all the samples to create this cool melody and like all the backing track like it's it's just a very good video overall and like mm -hmm. it really deserved all the attention that it got yeah all right well where can people find you 
Well, on I'm on media. Twitter with the Twitter handle McMangos1 because someone stole McMangos. Um, I'm also on Tumblr, though not very active. I'm also on YouTube, obviously. But Twitter is where I'm the most active, so yeah, follow me there, I guess. Yep, and go watch go watch all the kill everybody watch PMV <laughs> watch PMVs <laughs> because that was like legit my favorite fad back in the day. Hell yeah, dude.